five of the Secunda Secunda. The topic for this lecture is fear, and I am Dr. Ibrahim. So uh, we are looking at the vices opposed to fortitude. So people could probably make much longer videos, much more interesting videos, perhaps, <laughs> on fear in general or in various capacities, but I'm really only looking at fear in terms of how uh, St. Thomas writes about it in question 125 of the Secunda Secunda. Um, this, uh, these, there's three vices that are opposed to fortitude. Um, fear and then fearlessness and daring. Uh, fearlessness and daring are more in common versus fear, which is uh, different. So when we're talking about uh, moral virtues being the golden mean, there's excess of deficiency. So uh, fear would be a deficiency in uh, courage. Uh, and fearlessness and daring might be uh, more of an excess of courage, um, or you could see it as a, an excess of fear. <laughs> fear. Uh, it, whereas a deficiency of uh, fear would be fearlessness. So. And whenever you're talking about excess and deficiency, it depends on how you're framing it. Um, but we're dealing with uh, fear at this time. A very uh, short section, only four articles, although fearlessness and daring both only have two articles apiece. So fear, fear is twice that of the others, or equal to them if you combine them. Um, fear uh, in the, the Latin. Uh, you're looking at the timid, right? The timidity. Um, so sometimes you'll see this referred to as timidity. Um, then uh, it's a sin uh, on account of its ordinate uh, acts. All sins are in terms of except for intrinsic evils, but all other sins are in terms of their uh, inordinate acts, um, in, the, in that acts against reason. Um, and uh, and the idea is that our appetites must be uh, subject to reason, right? Uh, we, uh, we, we have appetites, we have desires, we have passions, um, but to know if they are correct or how to put them uh, will lead to the, the correct end, then you have to put them in the light of reason. The light of reason is needed. So uh, fear is when Fear exists in two ways. One is when it's ordinate, when it is properly ordered. So if uh, my friend Joseph would say he was a very tall, clumsy person, and, you know, me being afraid of climbing ladders is not a phobia because I am a tall, clumsy person and I am very likely to fall down the ladder. Therefore, his fear of ladders uh, is not inordinate, it's ordinate based on knowing himself. Um, another example, if you have somebody you see a poisonous snake very close by, you're afraid of the poisonous snake uh, is ordinate, right? If you are walking down a path and there's a rattlesnake rattling uh, five feet from you, you should be afraid, right? There should be fear uh, in that regard. So if you're afraid of things that you should be afraid of, uh, is not ordinate. Uh, another example would be fear of the Lord is the first stage of wisdom. Right? So fear of the Lord is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, that is not sinful. Fear of the Lord. Um, it, fear of the Lord would be being in awe, uh, in, in a type of awe that causes you to consider the relationship with God. Right? You realize how the awesomeness of God then you should have some level of fear uh, in God's midst because you don't want to offend God and you want to give God what God do and uh, you wouldn't act uh, casually. You know, as some of the evangelical churches kind of promote, you know, the pastor in flip flops and a t shirt. They, uh, well, you just want to be comfortable. Okay, if, if you want to go to a warehouse and be comfortable. Right, that the you know okay, but if you are actually to go before God, right, you would not uh, dress in 
t-shirt and flip flop um, because that would not be giving God God's due right, reference. Um, so uh, the question is, is it properly ordered or uh, inordinate, right? Not properly ordered. Uh, if it's not properly ordered, then it would be uh, sinful. So uh, a hard time coming up with examples here because things, I mean, mortal sins are clear. Venial compared to not even a sin sometimes can be uh, somewhat uh, of a gray area, right? So if, if the example of a rattlesnake, for example, one should be afraid of the rattlesnake. What if one were to see a gardener snake? A gardener snake, it's typical in the Northeast. Um, they are pretty small. Uh, they're non-venomous. They couldn't do any damage to you if it tried to eat some little mice and insects, right? So if, if you were to see a gardener snake, um, you were terrified of the gardener snake. That would be inordinate, right? And not the proper ordering to something that's not actually dangerous. Uh, is that sinful or a venial sin? It's an awfully great area. In, in terms of culpability, I, I don't think there's any culpability, culpability of being afraid of a gut or snake, right? Our, our phobias aren't necessarily culpable. Um, somebody disagrees, feel free to right below, I'd uh, love to hear, hear the argument, but probably not a culpability to the fear of a gardener snake. Um, but it is in the other sense of what it means to be sinful. If sinfulness is inordinate acts, right? This thing's not in the proper ordering, <laughs> which doesn't lead to the greatest happiness, right? Um, then in that regard, yes, right? It, it is a inordinate fear. Therefore, in some sense, it's, uh, it's venial, although I suppose it would be the most venial of venial things. Uh, now, timidity, is timidity opposed to fortitude? Well, yes, fortitude is about having uh, the courage uh, up even to the point of uh, death, even to death. Uh, to defend uh, the faith, uh, the truth of faith. Uh, if you are afraid to do that, um, it, then that would be a violation of fortitude. Uh, all fear arises from love, since no one fears uh, save what is contrary to something he loves. Uh, the beautiful line, it almost sounds Augustinian, although St. Thomas. Um, so you can't fear if, if you don't love something, uh, a person who, uh, dealing with deep depression and, and you finally don't give up loving even yourself, you never resort to suicide, right? Uh, that would be a complete lack of love of anything, maybe not hatred necessarily, but just indifference, right? Total indifference to everything that you don't even want to live any longer, right? from a lack of love. If you loved yourself, you would never um, commit suicide. Um, if you uh, love God enough, then martyrdom becomes easier. Uh, what, whatever the thing that you should not be afraid of, because it's inordinate, uh, would not be as big of an issue if, uh, uh, if it's properly ordered towards love. Oh, another point that ties into this is inordinate love leads to inordinate desires. So um, right, if you love yourself more than you love God, then you would not be willing to be martyred, right? If you love this life more than you love the truth, right, the truth of the faith, then you would not be martyred. So that would be an inordinate love of oneself. Um, and that would be then an inordinate desire. Um, uh, so it's a violation of fortitude if uh, your love for life, uh, love for your, your earthly life is so great that it's beyond anything else, then it's opposed to fortitude, which should give you the courage to even die.
pay all the way to the point of death. Uh, if you have timidity, then you would not be willing to go to the point of death. Um, therefore, uh, it is contrary to order to be contrary to even much lesser things, but in, in the fullest extent, in the perfect way, it would be uh, contrary to four degrees. Can fear be a mortal sin? Uh, well, yes, <laughs> most things are, most things would be not a sin or a venial sin or a mortal sin. So if it is properly ordered, fear is properly ordered, then there's no sin at all. The fear of a clumsy person falling off of a ladder is not inordinate, it's properly ordered. Um, it save you from going up the ladder and falling off. You know, it might lead to the preservation of life to have a certain amount of healthy fear, ordered fear. Um, now, if you have you know, inordinate fear, right, the fear of the gardener snake, maybe that's a venial sin, right? Uh, yeah, not that big of a deal. Uh, right, it might not lead you to the greatest happiness and human flourishing. It might not lead you to the greatest beatitudo if enough of these little things, right? You're afraid of spiders, and then you're afraid of crowds, and you're afraid of ladders, and you're afraid of dogs, and you're right. That you you might know people like that. They're afraid of a lot of little things. Right? If you start adding it up, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, this affects the quality of life. Right, this is a number of disordered. Uh, Disordered fears can lead to unhappiness, which could then be venial. If we uh, then take it to the furthest degree, right, that you would put uh, your fear uh, above being willing to be martyred, that would be then a, a mortal sin, right? If you were put in the position of uh, renounce your faith or we will shoot you happens to some Christians in Africa and the Middle East. If you do not renounce your faith and become a Muslim, we will, uh, we will kill you. If you were to put your human life above your soul, above truth of faith, then uh, you are a coward. <laughs> you are timid, you have fear, uh, and that would be a mortal sin because you properly uh, put your uh, things in the right order and, and, and reverence due to God is the highest, uh, the highest. So if you would be irreverent towards God in order to save your own life, then that would be disordered. It would, it would be even worse if it were to show irreverence towards God for lesser things. Now this is you know, even more common, uh, you know, uh, and within the culture. So uh, if your friends are all laughing and joking around and being irreverent uh, and you don't want to say anything because you don't, you're afraid of your friends, you're, you know, you're afraid to be unpopular. Uh, now you are uh, you're giving up, uh, you're being irreverent, not to, even to save your own life, but to save your popularity. You know, Save being cool, right? This is even lesser degree, right? Uh, you can deal with the hierarchy. There's the soul, and then there's the, the the human life, and then there's the things of this life, right? That, that hierarchy, which we see over and over again. If you're just talking about coolness, or popularity, then you're talking about the things of this world, right? Things of this world. That's the lowest thing. That's the least important thing. Uh, if you were to put that more important than the reverence of God, then is clearly a mortal sin. Well, how do we know uh, if it is a mortal sin or not? Well, does the rational appetite, does this fear reach the rational appetite, the will? Uh, and are you choosing it, right? Are you choosing this uh, and shunning something which is inordinate? Right? Things you should shun, right? You're walking by a rattlesnake, you should shun the rattlesnake and run away. Um, if you are shunning God, then that is inordinate, right? Inordinate thing. Right? The other part of this is, does it does the fear reach the rational appetite? So if a person simply sees a gardener snake, and they know it's a gardener snake, 
right? If, if you say, well, they, I don't know what type of snake it is, and I'm ignorant of snakes, and I thought it could be venomous. Well, then if you, then if we look at it from that angle, then well, some snakes are poisonous. If you see a snake and you don't know if it's poisonous, the properly ordered thing to do would be to avoid all snakes that you don't know are poisonous or not poisonous or not, right? That, that wouldn't be in order. But if you knew it was just a garden snake and you still, if it's more out of instinct, right, you see the snake and you don't, this is not something that has reached the rational appetite, right? You have not reasoned this. We are talking about simply uh, emotional appetites, uh, the sensory appetites. Um, you're not talking about culpability, right? If you don't, if it, you haven't reasoned it, if it's going to be a mortal sin, you have to have used uh, reason. You've had to rationalize this as the right approach. Uh, so, you know, if your friends are making fun of divine things and, you know, you're thinking about this for five minutes, like, oh, I wish they would stop talking about that, but I'm not going to say anything. Okay, well, you've had time. <laughs> uh, your rational appetite has kicked in and you've decided not to shun things which ought to be shunned. Um, therefore, that would be a mortal sin. Does fear diminish or erase uh, sin? Uh, the final article. Um, no, <laughs> right? Uh, if we say, yeah, yeah, fear removes all guilt, right? Fear removes all culpability. Well, then if that's true, fear is not a sin, <laughs> right? If every time you're afraid, you have no culpability, that then, you, then it's not a sin. Um, does fear um, diminish it being a sin? Y yeah, yeah, it diminishes it because if you are afraid, then you have then your action is less voluntary. Right? You are not as freely choosing it. If uh, you know if you're hanging out with your your friends and they're being irreverent, uh, and you decide to say nothing. And you're on equal footing with your peers. Well, you're still pretty responsible for that, right? Because are you really afraid of your friends? And to what, what degree are you afraid of your friends? You're afraid that you'll be a little less popular in their eyes. Well, that's an awfully little uh, punishment, right? That's an awful little thing. You don't even really know. Right? They might respect you, but they don't have to respect them and God. Um, if they're you know, if Boko Haram and they have a machine gun and they put it to your head and told you to say something of reverence, irrever irreverent towards Christ, you know, I don't think they would do that since they honor Christ as a prophet, but you know, if, if they, uh, they require you to desecrate the Eucharist or something like that um, to a machine gun, well, that fear is considerably greater than the fear of being unpopular, right? So fear can be different uh, depending on of fear. So if a person were to desecrate um, the Eucharist, in some ways is more diminished. In, oh, here's another element of the example. If it was just for you, right, you would say, uh, yeah, take my life. Take my life. Now let's say they have your, your daughter, your daughter, and they say, we're going to rape her kill her if you don't desecrate the Eucharist. Well, now, <laughs> I have to give that some, some thought, right? I, I know that might be shocking to some people to say that, but uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within that innocent child, um, and the desecration of the Eucharist, you know, the, you're dealing with a, a tough, right, a tough situation. Right? You're the father of a house. We're going to rape your wife and your daughter and kill your son, or you desecrate the Eucharist. That's a, one, of the, one of those those tough situations, right? Uh, maybe it's not for somebody listening to this, but it's one of those tough situations. If the person were to desecrate the Eucharist in that, is it a mortal sin? Absolutely not. It's a mortal sin. Did the person voluntarily do it? Yes, but not fully, right? right? There was an awful lot of coercion within that. 
this ties into what Aristotle in the Nicomachean Ethics talks about that all actions done in fear are uh, not simply voluntary or involuntarily, but a mixture, right? Even if you were to say in that situation, right, I had to desecrate the Eucharist, I had no choice. It's not true. There is actually still a choice, right? If they were to say to you, uh, shoot the, the person in the head, you know, shoot this person in the head or well, I'm going to kill both of you, right? You'll both die if you don't shoot this person in the head. So they're, they're pressuring you to become a murderer. Otherwise, you both die. Well, if you were a utilitarian, you would say, well, it's better for one to die than for both of us to die, right? So from a utilitarian way, yeah, you shoot the person in the head. But from uh, a virtue ethics perspective, um, we cannot become a murderer, right? Uh, you could say, I have no choice. I have to shoot the person in the head. You don't. You actually, you don't. Uh, but they'll shoot me in the head. Well, if they shoot me in the head, I don't die a murderer, right? They're a double murderer. I'm not a murderer, right? I can't control whether or not they shoot me in the head or not. What I can control is myself and uh, my virtue. Uh, not control. I have no control over moral luck, but I have control over uh, my moral virtue. So I'm, I'm not. Nobody's. Nobody can make you do anything. Um, you still have to choose it. They can make it very difficult to make the choice, but you still have freedom, uh, free will. So in that regard, um, fear diminishes culpability in some respect because if it was less freely chosen and mortal sins require free, free choice, voluntary choice. Um, however, uh, it does not remove, it doesn't remove culpability. So in conclusion, uh, this is a whole bunch of could be's, right? So maybe if I try to sum it up in my own words, you know, uh, this, but I repeat myself a lot anyway. Um, fear, if it's properly ordered, is not a sin at all. If it is improperly ordered, but more of a gut reaction, or uh, it can be a venial sin, right? If it rises to the rational appetites, right? if it rises uh, to the will, uh, an act of justice, right? um, then it can become a mortal sin. If you have rationalized it and you have chosen the inordinate route, uh, then it becomes a mortal sin. Um, now, sin can be diminished. Uh, I mean, fear can be, the sinfulness of fear can, be, can diminish, be diminished because it, uh, fear diminishes voluntariness, uh, but it does not and even when somebody has a difficult choice because of coercion, people still have a choice and uh, they're culpable for their own choices. Okay, so that's all we have on fear. Next topic will be uh, fearlessness, right?